Elizabeth preferred to fight her enemies either with proxies or make use of espionage. Her principal secretary and spymaster, Francis Walsingham, established a wide network of spies, letter interception, cryptology, and double agents. They kept him up to date on what the Spanish were up to, enabling, enabling the English Navy to adequately prepare for the inevitable epic future clash. He used his connections to unveil assassination plots against Elizabeth, both real and imaginary. He famously entrapped the imprisoned Mary Queen of Scots by intercepting and fabricating correspondence with would-be and phantom co-conspirators. Elizabeth had kept Mary locked up for 19 years for suspected treason. Mary was a Catholic and a credible claimant to the throne, and therefore a significant threat. The Elizabethan court was Protestant, but much of the population was Catholic. The Protestant leadership was vulnerable to Catholic insurrection. Catholic houses often had priest holes. These were hidden chambers for the purpose of hiding Catholic priests. Walsingham had been in Paris to witness the 1572 St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, a spree of violence and murder against Calvinist French Protestants. Walsingham knew that the Protestant court in London was vulnerable to such rebellions, and agents from Catholic Europe could exploit Catholic resentment. Mary Queen of Scots was a figurehead for such resentment. She could legally be imprisoned indefinitely, at least there was nothing to stop her from being imprisoned indefinitely, but evidence was needed for an execution. Meanwhile, 700 men involved in a plot hatched by a Catholic Northumberland nobleman to assassinate the President Elizabeth, and then to release and put the imprisoned Mary on the throne. These 700 men were executed when the plot was uncovered. Mary was not a co-conspirator. Uh, nonetheless, when Walsingham uncovered the plot, he saw it as an opportunity to entrap her. Mary was imprisoned, but she was held in comfortable conditions. She had uh, servants at her disposal. One of the servants, in fact a double agent working for Walsingham, uh, the servant offered to smuggle correspondence through beer barrels. Encrypted letters were placed in the beer barrel corks. Uh, these corks, also called bungs, they were large enough to hold a rolled up letter inside a cavity bored into the shaft of the bung or the cork. Mary was told that arrangements were undertaken to have correspondence handled at the, at the brewery so that she could communicate with her supporters. In fact, all correspondence would go through Walsingham and his cryptographer. Anthony Bamington, a nobleman and supporter of Mary, wrote a letter to who he saw as a queen-in-waiting, detailing plans for a Spanish invasion, the execution of Elizabeth, and the rescue and installation of Mary as Queen of England. The letter was intercepted and decoded. The letter was then forwarded to, to Mary via the beer barrel. Mary's response appears to countenance the plot, but not in clear language. Babington's guilt was clear, and he was executed for his attempt to overthrow Elizabeth, a plot remembered in history as the Babington plot. Walsingham was determined to do away with Mary, and she was put on trial. Details of the conspiracy were presented at the trial, but not of Walsingham's entrapment. Mary was found guilty. To be executed, Elizabeth would have to sign a death warrant. She put this task off for months, hesitating to kill a fellow queen and second cousin. The death warrant was eventually signed, and Mary was executed. Walsingham's network of spies were known as intelligences. The word intelligence in the sense of intellectual ability dates from the 14th century from Old French. However, intelligence, in the data obtained by espionage sense, dates from this Walsingham period, being first attested in this context in 1580.